Would you define yours as a healthy lifestyle? It's one of those things that can be elusive. That is, the finish line keeps moving away from you like your own hand held out in front of you would. Before we open, I invite you to come up with an answer to this. You've been tasked with creating the Wikipedia definition of healthy lifestyle. What do you write? I'm thinking you better push pause because while it sounds so simplistic to say it, like everybody knows, I'm going to challenge and say perhaps no one actually knows. Prove me wrong. But this is why I'm giving homework at the end. I don't want to do it all myself. Can you wait to read? I can't wait to read what you've written and please add it to the show notes. Will you? The link for this one will be flipping50.com forward slash healthy lifestyle. With my guest today, we're going to attempt to define a healthy lifestyle. We'll discuss how you discover yours, measure whether it's working for you and where to look to define it for yourself. My guest is Denise Stiegel. She is the CEO and curator of HealthyLivingList.com. She's also co-author of the best-selling book, The Successful Body. An inspirational thought leader, she's determined to provide her Healthy Living List readers with honest, reliable, research-backed information in health, wellness, personal development, and fun that you can use in real life. Denise began her career with a bachelor's degree in hotel, restaurant, and business management, focusing on nutrition. She's condensed 25 years of experience and study in nutrition, cooking, exercise, and coaching to help women find a happy, healthy lifestyle that works for them. Her experience in cooking and nutrition delivers a unique perspective on what works and doesn't work for most people. Her philosophy revolves around the foundation, eat real food, make good decisions, and be accountable. And I am Deborah Atkinson. You are listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns. Most of all, hope to inspire you. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in the second and better half. And I cannot wait to dive into this episode. Denise, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for taking time out to be here with me. Thank you for having me. It's always a, it's always a pleasure. It's always fun. So, you know, I've just read your entire bio and really um, eventually we're going to come back around and talk about your philosophy of eating real food, making good decisions, being accountable. But I think one by one, mm-hmm. we may want to unpack those things and talk about what mistakes do you think that women make? Boy, this is a loaded question. <laughs> Even as I say it, I'm like, oh my God. What mistakes do you think women make most frequently with nutrition? Because you're advocating for eating real food. So let's talk about the, of course, unintentional mistakes. Nobody gets up in the morning thinking, I'm going to screw this up today, <laughs> that we might be making with our diets. I think so often we get to this stage in life and we're thinking, okay, you know, maybe I've put on a couple of pounds, you know, I've got to do something about it though. We've tried before and maybe it's five pounds, maybe it's 10 pounds, maybe it's more. Um, And maybe you're that lucky person who, you know, has always maintained their healthy weight, but either way, I think we get to a place in, uh, in our fifties where we're going, okay, well, this is how I used to eat. And I'm still eating that way. But our bodies have changed. Our needs have changed. And I'll admit my favorite food in the world is pizza. But I know I can't eat pizza the way I used to when I was 20. Once a month, I'm good with pizza. I think the biggest mistake we really make, though, is trying to follow the most current trend in, quote unquote, dieting. Mm. And it changes every week. Actually, I think it changes every day, (laughs) depending on whether you're looking at Facebook or Instagram. There's always somebody touting some new diet or some new product that is the miracle product, the miracle um, strategy. And what I think happens so often is we go, we jump from, oh, I'm going to try this one. And then we 
doesn't, it doesn't work after a week. And so we try something else and we get further and further away from focusing on nutrition the way it was in the beginning. Like you ate your fruits and vegetables, you know, when you went, when you went home for dinner, when you were growing up, you know, there was always, um, a protein, a veg, um, a starch, probably a small salad at my parents' house. And that's, you had a pretty well-rounded meal, but then we've gotten away from that because of all of these diets that we hear about. And so that I think is the hardest thing. And, and the biggest mistake is to jump from diet to diet, because I don't believe in dieting. I believe diet means the foods you eat, the healthy foods that you eat. And so truly, I think at this stage, it really is a matter of going back to the basics. And that's why I always say, eat real food. We know what that is. We know what our real foods are. They're just not that sexy anymore. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) And I have to go back. I just share a little bit about you know, the at your parents' table, you know, there was always a vegetable, always this. I remember my mom, I was I was in kindergarten when my mom remarried and my stepdad, so I was first of all, I was a, the youngest, probably an afterthought, but <laughs> um I like to call it a blessing. But uh my stepdad was ten years older than my mom, so I had quite a bit older parents. But the man didn't like vegetables. That mm. saved me so many times, <laughs> except for the the one vegetable that he liked, stewed tomatoes. Oh, I'm like, man. what? What? Like, how did that happen? So, um, but, you know, I had to get out of jail card a lot of times because, you know, we could say, well, he's not eating them. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know? Yeah. It's so true. Actually, my nephew, when he was a little kid, um, his dad was the same way. He didn't eat vegetables because he didn't eat them growing up. So when my sister would say to my nephew, you know, Robbie, eat your veggies, he would just look at her like she was a crazy lady and say, well, dad's not eating them. I'm not eating them either. Mm -hmm. And she struggled. And it's taken him a long time. He'll be 25 this year. It's taken him a long time to get to a place where he'll eat vegetables because he knows that it's healthy for him and that he needs to, if he wants to maintain his health. And um, at this stage, um, I think all of us kind of go back and look at when we're kids. And and I have to say like the one thing that my mom used to make that my sister and I would always just cringe when she would put it on the table, lima beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still haven't, still haven't bonded with lima beans. (laughs) No, me either. (laughs) I think if there's one vegetable that you do not like, it's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I So there's that, right? So there's the real food. That's unpacked. And, and this one, too, I want to talk about because I think that this is a moving target. How do you define good decisions? Because while there are a lot of women who want to, they are – also probably confused by what is a good decision today. You know, what's your way to divine that uniquely for a listener right now? I think, I think we all in our soul, in our core, know what those good decisions are that we need to make for ourselves. We stop listening at some point. So it's a bit of that intuition. It's a little bit of that stepping back and being quiet and I think it's really important to know what it is that your goal is. If it's about losing weight or being healthy, um, maybe changing up some, some habits. It's really, you have to start there. What is it? What is my goal? What do I want? And then based on that, you can make good decisions. Um, Not necessarily bad decisions, but we want to make good decisions. If we, don't make the best decision. That's okay. We can always come back to making a better decision. So I never say that we make bad decisions. We make good decisions or we can even make better decisions, but it really does stem from what it is that we want. What is our goal and how is the decision that we're going to make going to get us from where we are today and fill that gap to where we want to be tomorrow? Well said. Yeah, I like that. 
Um, all right, let's talk about this. So let's say <laughs> I am never the person who should do this. Talking about my family a lot today because I sat for hours and hours and hours and hours at the dining room table with my stepdad doing math. But let's say <laughs> if the problem today that we're trying to solve for is healthy lifestyle, mm-hmm. how does how does any one woman get there for herself and her unique needs, uncover them? I think in the beginning, it's a bit of trial and error. Mm -hmm. I think at some point, when you get to a point in life where you've tried different things, you've tried the different diets, um, you've tried the different exercise programs, some felt better than others. To go back to the things that felt good and revisit those there's always a little bit of research because there's always something new that's good that's out there. But I think to start with is to remember the things that felt good and then go from there. It's a learning process. It's obviously not a one size fits all, but it's also not something that you're going to open a book and say, oh yeah, there's my answer. But it truly is important that it's about what feels good for you, what is right and what works within your kind of family life limitations. Um, I think that's essential. Additionally, I think it's really important to talk to the people that are around you, um, whether you're, you're, you're it's your spouse, if you're taking care of aging parents, if your kids are still around, tell them what your goals are and kind of get them on board because then it's easier for you to try to make those decisions and find those things that work because sometimes you try something and it doesn't. But if you have the support of your friends and your family, it seems to be a lot easier to find what works. Love that. And I love the fact that it is Trial and error and knowing that going into it, Mm -hmm. I think can be so very important that You're not going to stumble on the right solution to the problem right away. So again, I'm I'm going back to (laughs) to algebra, right? Where (laughs) the whole paper is messy. And as long as you come to the answer or you show your work, you Mm -hmm. get some credit for it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was I was real I did really well with the show your work bit in when I was in high school. (laughs) I may not always have the right answer, but I showed a lot of work. Right. Oh my gosh. Me too. I love that. (laughs) Okay. And you know, you can't get away from being on Flipping 50 without talking about exercise just a little bit because Mm -hmm. I know you have Mm -hmm. done Stronger, our program. And I want to ask, and you didn't know I was going to ask this. So listeners, she didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) And we could edit, but really I don't like to. So I'm with you. How did it go? Well, you know, it went so well that I am signing up again because we're in a really good uh, place uh, since Stronger just opened uh, on the 9th. I'm starting again because I enjoyed the program so much. It's perfect. The spring is supposed to be coming. I don't know about Rochester, Minnesota, but the spring (laughs) is coming, everyone. (laughs) And, you know, we've all been kind of stuck in the house and not quite on our game. This is an amazing program to get you back on track. This is one of those good decisions that you can make. And even to this morning, I got an email from one of my clients that said, hey, you know, I'm interested in this stronger program, but I'm going to be away a couple of times. You know, what should I do? And I said, join. (laughs) Right. (laughs) His life is messy, right? Life is messy. We're busy. There's never a perfect time. There's never a perfect solution. Um, You know, I'll have to wait until X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. No, this is a perfect time to start the Stronger Program. It's a 12-week program. And it's what I love about it is each week you kind of build. But at the same time, if you're not quite where you want to be, it's okay. And that's the piece that I really love. There easy exercise. They look easy. <laughs> Sometimes looks can be, be deceiving, but it's, it's amazing how these exercises build on each other in such a, in such a smart way. 
um, oftentimes in the past, you know, I'd go to the gym and I do some of the same motions, but never in succession and never really in the order that um, you put them in, Deb. And so for me, that was the biggest aha. Oh, wait a minute. I should do that exercise followed by this one. And why? And I think that's the most important piece. You share your your knowledge or wisdom and you educate us why we're doing the exercises the way we're doing them in the succession that we are. Thank you for saying that. And I, I think too, and I give um, credit and applause to every woman out there who's listening because I think that is one of the things we we couldn't have known, I think, how valuable and our our past history or knowledge was going to be like until we get here with the life experience we have, mm-hmm. understanding like becoming demanding about tell me why and how this is helping me, not just how and what to do, mm-hmm. but connect the dots so that I can get invested and committed and convicted to doing it. And I think that's sometimes where I hear women say too often, I don't have any motivation. I think I must be just lazy. And I was like, nope, I'm not buying it. I I don't think any woman listening, if you're in earshot, you're hearing this, I don't think you lack conviction about your own health or the role model that you do for others. I don't think you lack commitment to also passing down some kind of better health habits to some people who are looking to you for advice. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we lack congruence between our actions and what it is we want. And that's where we can use your last piece. So in the book, you say, eat real food, make good decisions. Let's talk about being accountable. And like, how do you scribe steps to get started and being accountable? And is this accountable to someone else, to ourselves? Is it a yes and a yes? Say more about that. It's a yes and a yes, but it has to start with being accountable to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not accountable to yourself, and if you fib to yourself and you don't do the things that you need or want or love, how can you be accountable to somebody else who's expecting that from you? So it always starts with you, who you are to your core. If you're eating real food, you're making decisions, that's great. But if you're not accountable for those times when you slip, oh, it's okay, you know, I'll start again on Monday. And then it happens the next Monday and the next Monday. You can never get to that. You can never close that gap from where you are to where you want to be if you're not accountable to yourself first and foremost. Once you start to see results, whether that result is, oh, I'm sleeping better. I'm feeling better. My tummy's not bothering me. Hey, I'm stronger. You understand how, where that accountability piece really fits in. It's not a yes or no. It's a, it's, it really is a have to. If you're going to do the other two pieces, the, 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 the third piece really is just really kind of like brings it home. I guess I, mean, I was, I was listening to them. They were talking about baseball last night. So I had, this, I had a baseball <laughs> analogy in my brain there. Oh, of boy. course. <laughs> So, and and everybody, I think it relates to sports so, so well. So it makes such a great analogy. All right. So this title for the book, I really love it. And I love, I think uh, it's a triplet. So if we're going to really talk baseball, there we go. But <laughs> eat real food, make good decisions and be accountable. I mean, that just rolls off your tongue. And I think good things happen in threes. The universe mm-hmm. speaks in threes. Where'd that title come from? When I really started to think about my coaching business, when I became a health coach, I initially became a health coach using a product that after about three weeks, I realized I did not believe in because I wasn't eating real food. And I said that 
time and time again, I don't like this. This isn't who I am because this is just eating product all day. It's not eating real food. And so that always came out of my mouth. Eat real food, eat real food. And one day I just said to my husband, I said, you know, one, there's, there's this foundation I have. I, I've, I've come up with this foundation. It's, you know, to, if you're going to eat real food, it's, it's about making good decisions. And, you know, and, you know, the accountability piece, you know, whether you have an accountability partner and all of a sudden I said those things in succession and I went, eat real food, make good decisions, be accountable. Oh, that's the living healthy list way. Mm-hmm. And so it's the living healthy list way. It was, uh, it made sense to make it the the name of my first book. Love it. Love it. And this new book, I really want to talk about that one. It is Healthy Living, Happy Life, a practical plan to finding the healthy lifestyle that works for you. And that's out late in April. So mm-hmm. definitely um, you want to get your grubby mitts on that, everybody. <laughs> maybe not grubby. Maybe I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> but I also want to come back to something that you just mentioned. So what it is you're doing in the the real kind of overarching umbrella of what you do called the living healthy list. So first of all, let's describe what is that and it, how did it come to be born? Because I think it's such a unique idea and you're like this hub for midlife women. Mm-hmm. Living healthy list is a healthy lifestyle resource. It is a place for women to come to feel safe, that they're getting honest, reliable, and unbiased information and health, wellness, personal development, and bringing a little bit more fun into life because all of those things are important. The the mission or the goal truly is to excite, to engage in conversation with each other, to educate, but most empowerly importantly, to empower women to make those hard decisions that are necessary to find the healthy, happy lifestyle that works for them in order for them to flourish in life. Too often we say, oh, things are okay. How are you? Oh, things are fine. I'm okay. And is okay okay? Do you want more than okay? I think we all deserve more than okay. I think we all deserve to flourish and it's really hard to find the information and the support if you're looking online. So how living healthy list came about was a handful of years ago. I was having a bit of a health issue, challenge, problem, give it a name. And I was really struggling with ladies, you know, this, uh, with night sweats and, hot flashes during the day and all sorts of things that just were, were just making me miserable, probably driving my husband crazy, but really making me miserable. I didn't feel healthy. I didn't feel like myself. Um, I wasn't happy and I have a really great life, but I wasn't happy and I wasn't enjoying it. Mostly because I wasn't sleeping and because I wasn't sleeping, I was grumpy. And because I was all of that, I was eating things, not making good choices and not eating the best real food. Because even, you know, those of us in the biz, you know, sometimes we fall off the wagon too. So I went to the doctor and kind of got poo-pooed and he said, oh, if it's at your age, it's just a phase, you'll be fine. But I wasn't fine. I started to ask other questions. I looked to other professionals. But eventually I came to Dr. Google and found the information on, on the, on the internet was really lacking to the, to the point where it was either so basic that it didn't help, or it got to the point where there was a lot of sales, buy my stuff, buy my stuff without any connection or call to see if it would actually be the right thing. Um, Or it was just... The information got to the point where, I mean, literally it was, oh, you're fine to the, to, you have a tumor and you're dying. I mean, truly, this was the, 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 the gamut of the information. And of course, my background is food and nutrition, hotel restaurant management, food and nutrition. 
And I've been working in the health and wellness world for a long time. Denise, I My think husband's you just a doctor at Mayo Clinic. So between the two of us, you would think that we could find good information on the internet. We could sift through and find what we were looking for. And we couldn't. So I said to him, you know, wouldn't it be great if there was like one place that you could go to where you could get the information that you need, you can read about it, you could connect with people who actually want to help you, not just sell something to you, but want to help you. And so he turned to me and said, well, why don't you create it, Denise? And so I did. Wow. That is a woman taking action, seeing a need, filling the gap, and not waiting for somebody else to do it, but doing it herself. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And thank you for everybody listening, because I think uh, you have definitely become what what I like to call it like the Huffington Post, which is like known as kind of the great roundup of this is a great place to go. Mm-hmm. They've filtered the writers, right? You know, and, and in a sense, you've done this for the women that you're serving. So we're definitely exactly. going to put the link to to that and to your brand new book. So if you want to get on the wait list or by the time you're listening to this, this book will be almost ready. So you can get it wherever books are sold. And there is a PDF a uh, companion journal to the book that you're going to want to get your hands on as well. I so love that. Okay, Denise, so while we have you here, mm-hmm. because you do serve such an eclectic group of women looking for different things, but at the same point in their life, is there one question I should have asked you that I had not yet? Ooh, that is a great question. I think one of the things that is important is, Denise, how does this information come to you? Where does does the information for the blogs and for the website come from? And the answer to that is I am really fortunate that I uh, collaborate with experts in various areas of health, wellness, again, personal development and fun. And in this collaboration, we all bring something different and something unique to Living Healthy List. So we have different specialists, so to speak, on Living Healthy List who I either know, love or trust because I've worked with them personally. Um, I have interviewed them or they are at this level, at this stage, we are still um, inviting people uh, to Living Healthy List as our experts who are first level um, referrals from the people that I know, love, and trust uh, that are experts on Living Healthy List. So they're vetted. They, I know who they are. They know who I am. They understand and are excited about our mission. And so it's a, tr- a true collaboration with a group of women and a few smart men <laughs> who truly are here to educate and to help women truly to flourish in life and to find those, find the answers that work for them. Very cool. Such a great project. And I thank you so much for being here. Ladies who are listening, it's your turn. So it is time, number one, all the links to connect with Denise and to get on the wait list if that book has not been released. If you're listening a little bit later, it's been released. You're going to want to get that and how to connect with her on social as well and get the resources for yourself will be in the show notes, which will be at flipping50.com forward slash healthy lifestyle. And you know, now is the time when I say if there is a question you wish that I would have asked and I did not. And or if this has been helpful and valuable, we'd love to hear from you. Love to know that. That keeps me going when I get up in the morning. You can leave us that note too. Again, it's flipping50.com forward slash healthy lifestyle. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.